Hi, welcome to my first YouTube video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Elegato Stream Deck and the Palette Gear um, button fader and knob modules, uh, as you can see them here. Uh, the Stream Deck is a 15-button panel that you can assign the buttons to keystrokes. Uh, and the other cool thing is that each of the buttons has a little LCD screen behind it. And you can uh, use uh, JPEGs or, you know, picture files to create the buttons. So as you can see here, I have Cubase icon, uh, the Wavelabs, SoundForge, uh, iTunes, uh, Chrome, YouTube, uh, and any other icons, you can make them. So you can make the buttons look any way you want. That's the really cool thing. The palette gear is a set of modules here, and they snap together via magnets, uh, and they have you know the controller here and then a knob, a fader, and two buttons. And you can, this is the basic kit, uh, and you can get the more knobs or buttons or faders as you see fit. Uh, to add on to them, and they just snap them on and configure them. Uh, what you can do with this is the knob can be assigned to a continuous controller, a MIDI uh, continuous controller. The knob also has a push that can be assigned to a keystroke or a MIDI note. Uh, the fader can be assigned to a continuous controller, and the buttons can be assigned to keystrokes as well. Uh, what I am using these for is in Cubase, I have buttons set up for... Uh, you know, some functions I use all the time on the Stream Deck. And the palette gear is, this is my control room mo monitor uh, controller. Uh, so the, the, the red fader here uh, controls the speaker volume for my control room monitors. The green knob is the headphone volume for my headphones in here. Uh, this lower button here is the talk back button, and the upper button is the dim button. The push on the knob also mutes the speakers. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to show you how all of this works. Uh, so let's start with the Stream Deck. Uh, here we have on the screen, uh, the Stream Deck control panel. As you can see, it has the same icons as are on the Stream Deck on sitting on my desk here. Uh, and the way you configure them is, uh, we'll use the system. Uh, we're going to use a hotkey. So I drag a hotkey up to the Stream Deck here. You'll notice it appears down here on the, on the deck itself and up here. This is the default icon. I can give it a title and the name will show up right underneath it. Uh, the click to assign, you click here and then say we want this to be Control-Alt-B. I hold down Control-Alt-B. Now that's captured to that button. Anytime I hit that button, we'll get a Control-Alt-B. Uh, so that, uh, if I want to assign that to something in Cubase as a key command, I can do that here, and it will uh, be uh, fired every time I push that button. Uh, if I want to change what this icon looks like, I can double-click on the icon here, and I can go to, let's see, icon images. Here's where I have some saved. So let's see, what do we want? Uh, how about, uh, there we go. Let's pick this one. Uh, you know, we're going to double-click that, and now that appears here. Uh, the other thing we have, if I right-click, I can create a new icon, and it's going to open Stream, De or Stream Deck's Elegato's uh, icon creator. And here, uh, you can, uh, you know, create a background, and let's make the background. You know, you can pick one of these icons down here. So if we wanted to have, you know, a back button... We could put that there if we wanted it on a green background. Uh, and then the back button on top. We can do that. Uh, we can, you know, add any of these icons we'd like. Uh, and so forth. Or create your own. Uh, we can add, you know, you can drop a picture on it. Here you can add an image to it. If you wanted to add, like, a couple of different images and size them. Uh, we can add some text. You know, click to edit. I mean... Double click, it's like a hey, you know, uh, back, and uh, this is what our preview button. Then we can save this to a file on our computer, and then as I did before, drag it onto a button. 
Uh, so that's that's how you create buttons. I think in the new software uh, version, you can add uh, motion GIFs so the buttons can actually be moving files. Uh, and uh, the other great thing about this is you create a profile for whatever program you're using. So I have a profile for Cubase here. Uh, you'll notice when I select my profile, the buttons all change, and you can see them on the screen here. Uh, these are the buttons from the Cubase toolbar, select, range, split, glue. Uh, you know, I created just a button to uh, enable or disable auto scroll, uh, bring up the audio mix down screen, uh, enable quick link, uh, add an audio track, save a new version of the, of the file. These three buttons here switch to my three different speakers, uh, JBL, uh, LSRs, uh, Mac EHR 824s, and some iLouds. Uh, this will bring up my studio setup button. This button here brings up another page. Uh, so if I hit the button here, you'll see page two. I haven't really put much on here. I just have this show lanes button and a back button. So this will take me back to the first page. Uh, the great thing though is I can assign this profile uh, to uh, the Cubase EXE file. So whenever I open Cubase, it's going to switch its button panel to this page. Uh, so if I go back to here and go to the default profile, and I'm going to shrink that down, and I'm on my desktop here. If I open Cubase, you'll notice the keypad here switched to the Cubase profile. If you notice over here by the uh, in the control panel, my A, B, C speakers, if I hit B and C and B and A, they switch back and forth between my three sets of speakers. Uh, I'm using Sonarworks uh, reference to uh, EQ my speakers a little bit. So I have a different curve for each of the speakers. And so they're plugged into my audio interface in three sets of outputs. And uh, I switch the speakers right from the stream deck. So a very cool button panel, uh, saves a lot of time with hunting and pecking with the mouse or a trackball wheel. Um, the other uh, item is the pallet gear. So, uh, and I'll show you here. Uh, over here we have the uh, speaker volume, the headphone volume, talk back, dim, and the main uh, speaker on and off. So as I bring the fader up and down, you'll notice that the wheel turns and similarly, if I turn the knob, the headphone uh, adjusts here. And then talk back on. You can notice that the talk back on comes on and off. And the dim button, dim on and off. And if I hit this button on the knob, you'll notice the main uh, goes on and off. So that's uh, my uh, way I control my control room. And in the pallet gear setup, I'll bring that window up. It's very simple. Uh, so you can see this button is assigned, the button is assigned to a uh, C0, and the knob is assigned continuous controller 43, and that you just pick here. Uh, so we're in MIDI mode, so I'm going to use note C0 for the button and continuous controller 43. Here you can pick the color of the ring around the button here. So I've picked green because it matches the headphone knob. Similarly, the fader is set up the same way. Uh, you, I've picked continuous controller 42, and I'll show you how to set that those up in Cubase. Uh, and then uh, we have control alt D as the dim, and I've set that up as a key command in Cubase. And so when that button, you hit it, uh, you get control alt, you hit control alt D, and that dims and undims the speakers. Similarly, for the talkback, control alt shift T, I set up as a talkback push. So when I push this button, again, talk back on and off. You won't see it go on and off as I push the button because I'm focused on the pallet gear. If I click back to Cubase, now it goes on and off. Uh, pallet gear uh, here, it will mimic uh, you know what your configuration is. So if I move the buttons up here, you'll see that reflected in here. Uh, and you can add buttons to any side. Uh, just one side of the buttons has pins. The pins have to match up to the contacts here. And, uh, you know, if I break this apart, you can see the pins on this button here, 
and the pins in between them. And then as soon as you put it back in, they show back up and it remembers how they were configured. Uh, so that's uh, everything you need to do on the Palette Gear app to get these continuous controllers and MIDI notes working in Cubase. Uh, what you need to do is go to the studio setup. Uh, it was called device setup if you have a previous version of Cubase, I think before 9.0. Um, and you go to generic remote here. Uh, when you install the Palette Gear software, it installs a Palette Gear MIDI, uh, MIDI driver, so you select that as your MIDI input and output. Um, and we'll scroll down to the bottom here where I have the setup. I have control room volume. Uh, I call This is a name I gave it. Uh, it's a MIDI controller on MIDI channel 1, controller 42. The maximum value is 127, which is the maximum, and the R flag is set so it will receive on that uh, yeah. And then we scroll down in the next bottom list here, and this is what you tell it what you want to happen. So for controller volume down here, we're going to control in the VST control room, which is this over here, uh, we're going to control the control room volume. So that's here. Continuous controller uh, 43, which is this one, headphone volume, is in the VST control room, phones volume. So that's the knob controlling this volume right here and uh, then we have the control room mute which is a note on command i've told it it's on midi channel one and address zero which is the first midi note c0 uh, control room mute is a command that's where we find the on and off in the control room and it's the control room on and off uh, if we highlight that we can see control room on and off uh, and the flag here is P for a push button, so it toggles back and forth. Uh, and then you just hit apply and OK. Uh, I'm going to just hit cancel, and then all these buttons do exactly what you want them to do. So that's my first video on uh, some handy little controllers. Uh, if you don't, you can't afford a big controller that has some of these functions on it. Um, these are each about 200 bucks, so they are a little bit expensive, but if you need to add buttons or a second fader or a second knob, I think the, uh, the modules are about 50 bucks. Maybe the buttons are less. Uh, so it's a great little handy thing. They both connect USB to the computer, and uh, off you go. Thank you very much for listening, and have a great day.